Committee on Homeland Security, Subcommittee on Transportation Security will come to order. Subcommittee is meeting today to hear testimony on TSA's behavior detection activities and initial lessons learned from the tragic shooting that occurred at Los Angeles International Airport on Friday, November 1st. Uh, I will now recognize myself for an opening statement. I'd like to welcome everyone to this hearing and thank our witnesses uh, for taking the time out of their schedules to be with us here today. Two weeks ago, a lone gunman opened fire at Los Angeles International Airport, tragically killing one transportation security officer, Gerardo Hernandez, and wounding two other TSOs, along with a high school teacher. On behalf of the committee, our sincerest condolences go out to the victims and their families. Transportation security officers take great personal risk every day in order to secure our nation's aviation system and protect us against terrorism. And we thank them for their service. Before I continue with my opening remarks, I'd like to ask everyone to join me in a moment of silence to honor the life of Officer Gerardo Hernandez. Thank you. In light of the recent tragedy that occurred at LAX, it is critical now more than ever for TSA to work with stakeholders to conduct a comprehensive review of security programs to ensure that resources are being used in the most effective and efficient manner and that coordination and communication uh, with local law enforcement is seamless. The area prior to screening at an airport is a soft target where masses of people gather, much like a shopping mall or train station. This leaves airports open to virtually anyone who wants to enter, including someone who may have malicious intent. Uh, while it is the airport's responsibility to provide security and law enforcement, we all know that there are unavoidable risks of being in public spaces uh, and incidents like this one. What's important now is to identify whether there were unnecessary vulnerabilities that we can learn from. Uh, did TSA and airport police have seamless communication? Are there resources that could be shifted around to create a more robust, layered security posture? Um, I don't expect our witnesses to have all the answers here today, uh, but I do believe this hearing is a timely opportunity to examine one program that has been heavily criticized by both the Government Accounting Office and the DHS Office of Inspector General. TSA screening of passengers by observation techniques program, also known as SPOT, deploys over 3,000 behavioral detection officers in an effort to identify <clears throat> passengers that may pose a risk to aviation security. These TSA employees are not trained law enforcement officers. As such, they rely on state and local law enforcement to handle any situations that may arise beyond the screening of passengers and then baggage, or if they think someone is acting suspiciously. And the way to determine if someone is acting suspiciously, according to the Government Accounting Office, is not based on proven science. We know the threats to aviation are real. Our enemies continue to plot against us. I think my colleagues would agree that we need layers of security. Uh, but those layers have to make sense, uh, and they can't be based on a hunch. They have to be proven. I want to commend Administrator Pistol uh, for his tremendous effort to transform TSA into a risk-based agency. Uh, programs such as PreCheck are a huge step in the right direction. Uh, but my concern with SPOT is that it doesn't necessarily address threats emanating from overseas. Uh, it may not provide the deterrence we're looking for. And I'm not fully convinced it increases safety in its current form. Um, calling it risk-based and actually proving it being risk-based uh, are two entirely different things. To my knowledge, there's not been a single instance where a behavioral detection officer has referred someone to a law enforcement officer that has been turned deemed a terrorist. <clears throat> and so uh, it's important that we measure this effectiveness of the program and find a way to do that. Uh, the latest study conducted by the Government Accounting Office found that uh, first, human ability to accurately identify deception or deceptive behavior based on behavioral indicators is the same or slightly better than chance. Uh, number two, the TSA has limited information to evaluate SPOT's effectiveness. And finally, that it will be at least three years before TSA can report on the effectiveness of its behavior detection activities. GAO recommends that TSA limit further future funding for behavioral detection activities until it can provide scientifically validated evidence demonstrating that behavioral indicators can be used to identify passengers who pose a threat to aviation security. I look forward to hearing Administrator Pistol's intentions to address this recommendation. 
Uh, and with that being said, uh, I do see the value of using behavioral analysis to bolster aviation security, uh, but only when we can prove the taxpayer dollars are being spent in the most effective manner possible. Uh, perhaps reinforcing local law enforcement officers at airports who are well equipped to detect behavior, suspicious behavior, uh, would make more sense than having 3,000 employees directly employed by the TSA. Uh, but th these are questions we should examine. According to the Congressional Research Services uh, Service, TSA's SPOT program is the only standalone behavior detection program within either DHS or DOJ. If this type of program worked, I suspect we might see other agencies with similar missions deploying standalone programs to detect suspicious behaviors, but so far we haven't. Uh, I look forward to hearing from TSA on how it plans to address the GAO and IG recommendations, including how it plans to assess SPOT's effectiveness. With that, I now recognize the ranking member of the subcommittee, the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Richmond, for five minutes for his opening statement.